Welcome. I'm Suzette McHugh, Industry Partnership Coordinator at North Monco Technical Career Center. Today we're going to take a look inside North Monco and learn more about the programs offered. Joining me now are Jonathan Rotunda and Patrick Maloney, both students in the Diesel Truck Technology Program, and I'm glad you both could be here. So, Patrick, let's start with you. How many years have you been in this program? Uh, this is going to be my third year in the Diesel Program. Okay, and what grade are you? I'm in 11th grade. So you started in ninth grade. What made you pick the diesel program? Well, I was in eighth grade, I'm pretty sure, and our guidance counselor came around and they said there's a technical school that you can go on a field trip for and you can learn about cooking and trucks and all that. And I was into trucks, so I went on it and diesel really stuck out because I just, I like diesel trucks, so. Well, that's great. That's great that, you know, the tour mm -hmm. helped you pick a career path. Yeah. And how about you, Jonathan? What grade are you in? I'm a 12th grader. And how long have you been in this program? This is my second year going into diesel. Okay, so you're a little bit different than Patrick in that you started in 11th grade. What made you pick diesel? Uh, I actually had an interest in trucks for a while now. Um, I did, actually did not know about the technical school until 11th grade, so that's what made me start. So how did you hear about the school? Uh, my counselor knew me personally and she knew I had interest in, interest in trucks. So she wanted to bring me along and this is where I am now. That's great. Are you glad you made this choice? Yes. Well, can you tell us a little bit of what's taught in the diesel program? Um, we have a wide variety of things that are taught, um, anywhere from suspension to chassis to motor work. Everything's hands-on and it's, I enjoy it. And Patrick, um, what kind of equipment do you get to work on? He said it's hands-on, so. Uh, there's, you have the basic wrenches, hammers, screwdrivers and all of that. And then there's a, a variety of tools that take a lot of skill and you have to learn on them. You have to learn how to use them the right way and how to set them up so you don't damage the parts and cost the supplier money. So I imagine in ninth grade, there's probably certain things you learned compared to what you're learning now. What was that learning like? Uh, it is more safety and tires. So we, do, we would jack up the trucks, learn how to do that safely with jack stands, and then we would do tire rotation. We did that for a couple months so we knew how to do it. And we would use air guns and other air tools the proper way with safety glasses so we didn't get hurt. And it's a lot of safety the first few years. So you're working a lot of live equipment, large yes. scale. Yes. Okay, so Jonathan, what's a typical day like in your classroom? We hear about some of the things you get to do, but are you sitting in the classroom doing book work or just doing hands-on projects? Well, first off, we start in our, we go, we go into the class, we get into our locker room, we change. We get into our uniform, which consists of boots, our pants, and our shirt. And then we also have our safety glasses. Once we get into our uniforms, we go back in the classroom for about one third of the class. And then other than that, our two thirds of our class is in the, in the room, in the lab. So when you're in the classroom, you're learning the lesson that you're going to do hands on afterwards? Yep. Okay, well Patrick, what's your favorite part of this class then? Um, it's a very good environment to learn in. I, I'm a very hands on person, so our teacher, Mr. Rigner, he has us, he teaches us, like he tells us what to do, and then he watches us, us do it instead of him show us, and then we have to try and figure out how to do it on our own. And that really helped me learn a lot. And it's also just a fun environment, like he makes it fun. So it's easy to learn, it's not challenging. Right, so you're not just sitting at a desk, you're actually working on yeah. projects. That's great. Jonathan, do you have a favorite part? Um, I like how it's a lot of problem solving. Um, also, like Patrick said, our teacher helps us along and we're all actually pretty close together because we've been with each other for a good bit of time now and we also help each other along, so it's pretty fun. So you're saying how you're all close. I know at North Monco students come from five different school districts. I know both of you are from two different districts and when I go down to your classroom it doesn't seem like that. If there's no rivalry, you're you're actually friends working with each other. So I think that's important to see the hands-on ability, almost like it would be in the workforce. But another part of the rivalry, I will say, is I know you're both football players 
on opposing teams yep. and we won't talk about records, we're cheering for everyone's team. But I think that's great too, that you can be friends in the classroom even though you're rivals on the football field. Yep. Do you think that the class environment is really supportive of that five different districts coming together? Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. That, that's really good to see. Now, Jonathan, what skills do you think students interested in this program will need? You started in 11th grade, so did you feel like it was harder to come in, or are there, is there a certain skill set you need coming into this? I actually grew up working on things. I actually like to be a big problem solver, fix things on my own. So it wasn't too difficult making the trans, uh, transfer to diesel, but I feel like you need to be able to work with your hands, not be afraid to get dirty, and just have fun with it. Do you have anything to add to that, Patrick? There's a level of maturity that you need to have in this lab, because you can make jokes and mess around, but once, you have, once you're working with the, some tools, you have to be serious, and so nobody gets injured, and that's the main focus, so is safety, so. I think that you've stressed that a lot. The safety is very important, and I think with the large-scale equipment you're working on, that is very important. Yes. You, know, you also mentioned earlier about um, changing into uniforms. Jonathan, what does the uniform consist of? Our uniform consists of usually dicky pants, your typical work pants. Um, they have North Monco Technical Career Center shirts, which everyone buys that goes there, and then your boots, which are usually steel-toed or hard. And then you also have your, sun, uh, your glasses, your safety glasses. So is that all required? Is there anything else required that you have to purchase to participate in this program? Do you need any certain tools or anything? No. No, everything's supplied to you there. Okay, good. Jonathan, you're a senior. You've been in this program two years. Do you know what you plan to do when you graduate? Um, I actually plan on pursuing a career as a diesel mechanic. I'm actually looking at going into be a Caterpillar diesel mechanic working on heavy equipment. Now, did you know that before 11th grade that this is what you thought your career would be? I did know I had interest in being a mechanic. I was not specific towards diesel, but diesel caught my eye and it's pretty interesting to see the things that go on. That's great. How about you, Patrick, do you know? Um, well, I'm gonna, my father, he drives a diesel triaxle for work, so I would be going to one of his garages that fixes trucks and all of his company's trucks, most likely, and then going on from there. Well, that's great. I mean, I think that's great. You both have that problem-solving skill that you're interested in, and now you're getting to have an outlet for it. Mm -hmm. Would you, Patrick, recommend this school or the diesel program to any of your friends? Yes, I would, because it's a very it's something to, it's a skill you'll always have for your life. So you can, you'll learn this and you'll know it forever. So you have a job to fall back onto if you need one. And it's, it's a skilled job, so you'll get paid a larger amount than somebody that's just, that just is like working at McDonald's or something like that. Right, exactly. You it's have a, training it's a great, and all of that. Yeah, there's great career opportunities. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend this, Jonathan? I would recommend it. Um, actually, the school itself has a wide variety of things you can go for. Um, also, like Patrick said, there's also a backup plan. So even if you do go to college, you have your four-year, you're certified, and you have this to fall back onto. Right, there's, there's so many opportunities for you. Now, we're gonna change gears. Jonathan, you're a senior, and at North Monco, you have to do a senior project based on your career program. So, have you started yours? Do you know what you're working on? Yes, I started with mine. I actually am working on, this isn't diesel related, it's actually mechanical related. I grew up loving dirt bikes and loving to ride them, so I'm taking my uh, ability to problem solve and converting a four-wheeler into a go-kart. Okay, so we'll see that in the spring. Uh, every project's on display. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Patrick, you'll get some ideas for next year when you have to do this too. And earlier you mentioned about the school um, having all different programs and you didn't know what you wanted. And you also mentioned that there was culinary. So I'm gonna tell you, thank you both for being here. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna to talk to students in the culinary arts program. So stay tuned.
The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back. I'm Suzette McHugh, and today we are taking a look inside North Monco Technical Career Center. Joining me now are Mr. Al DeLong, the Baking and Pastry Arts instructor, along with one of his students, Cody Kratz. So thank you both for being here. Yes. Al, I'm going to start with you. Your program, Baking, is one of my favorites. So can you tell us what's taught in your class? We teach pretty much everything that you see in your local bakery. So whether you go to a local bakery, um, or one of the grocery store bakeries. We teach pretty much everything that's in there. Breads, pies, cakes, cookies. Um, we even do candies every so often. So pretty much everything that you see in the bakery. So are the students coming in with any skills or they're starting from the very basics? Most students come in from, have to start from the very beginning. Um, there are a couple that might have parents that own restaurants or, or even bakeries that they can start um, they know some of the stuff, but most of the students come in pretty cold and, and have expressed an interest in either doing baking or culinary. And like all students they, in, the, in the whole school, they choose a cluster. So in our case, they choose a culinary cluster. Um, from there, they, would, they um, get put into a class. So in my case, they would be put into my class. Um, right now, we're in the first marking period. So we would do the first class that's there. They're going to move on to... Uh, quantity foods starting in the second marking period. Third marking period, they will then move to culinary arts and restaurant practices. And then fourth marking period, they'll be in the dining room or the front of the house. And then at the end of that time, they get to choose whichever area they want to stay in. So if they're clustering through the different areas of the culinary arts program as a whole, do they do that for just one year or every year do they have to redo that? No, all first year students do it. Usually, even if they start in 11th grade, sometimes we, we make them cluster, but ninth and 10th, first year students do it. After that, they spend the rest of their time in the lab choice that they, that they or the career choice that they chose. So if someone comes in and says, I definitely want to be in baking, could they just do that or they still need to sample everything? We really like them to, to try everything because I've, I've had students that say, came in and said, this is where I want to be. And after they rotate through, they're like, hmm, I really like cooking and, you know, much better. So they end up staying in one of the cooking classes. And at converse to that, I've had students that we've had go through and say, I don't want nothing to do with baking. And once they come through the baking class, they end up choosing baking as a career. So it, it helps if they go through because some people change their mind. Remember, they're coming in ninth or 10th grade cold. Um, they probably only ever see what they see either in the bakeries that they go into or the restaurants that they go into or watch the Food Network a lot and the cooking shows and baking shows on the Food Network. So they pretty much they have an idea in their mind what they think they might want to do. But through the clustering process and going through all the labs um, through that first year, they get a good, deep, good feel for, yeah, I do definitely want baking. I don't want cooking, or maybe I do want cooking, you know, and, and change their mind. Or maybe I do want baking, and I've changed their mind from cooking to baking. I think that's great, because then they really do get to sample everything. Right. So how about you, Cody? Did you go through that process? Yeah, I went through the process in ninth grade, and I went through all four courses. And one of the big reasons I went with baking was because he had taught my dad. And oh. my dad said how good of a class it was and all that. And I had a prior interest in baking coming into it. So so did your dad teach you some baking tips while you were growing up? No. No, he wasn't he, doing the baking? I mean, occasionally he's made chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but nope. He's. But he still he, yes, encouraged he can, you to join it? Yes. So how many years were you in this program? Four years. Okay. This is my fourth. So you're a senior now. Yep. Um, I understand you're in the Pennsylvania Youth Apprenticeship Program, the yep. PIAP program at North Monco. 
and that means you're considered a full-time North Monco student. Yes. Can you explain what that's like? Well, being a full-time Monco student in senior year, you take all your academic classes at like Monday and Tuesday. You take English, science, math, and history. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you go out to work. Okay, so three days a week you're out working. Yep in this field yes so well, what do you get to do me i work at landis so right now i am doing the bake shift so i go in at six in the morning and i bake everything and break it all out and do it all over again so who would have thought in high school you would have had this opportunity to yeah. you know work in your field do you plan to continue in the baking field or you don't know yet what you're planning to do? i would like to okay no set goals yet though but you do have your father encouraging yes. you, so, so that's really good. Um, I was in your class recently. I usually only come down when your teacher tells me there's some great new sample, so I always have to mm. sample something. But when I looked around, there were all different types of flowers, um, pastry flour, cake flour, pumpernickel flour. What's it like? What are you doing in your class? Well, we have all the flowers for all the variety of stuff we make. And it's, I mean, fr quite frankly, I've only ever used maybe four of them, but I've done a lot of stuff. Oh. Well, what's a typical day like in your class? Are you oh. baking all day or? Um, Mondays is usually a bake day. And now, because I'm a senior this year, Tuesday, I'm taking Surf Safe and we go at 1.30 and it goes for the rest of the class. So Tuesday is kind of like a in-class day. Okay. Like book work. So um, Al, what is Surf Safe? Surf Safe is Surf Safe Food Sanitation Program. Uh, it's sponsored by the National Restaurant Association. And basically what happens is the students in their, usually in their senior year, but sometimes in their junior year, if we can fit them in, um, they are capable, they go through a, Roughly 10 to 12 week class period, depends on how the semester runs and everything, um, and how much production we have to do that we might have to cancel a few classes. But, uh, and then at the end of that, the students take a test, and if they pass the test, they get a 75 or better uh, on the test. They actually become certified in sanitation, and it's recognized by the Montgomery, the Montgomery County Board of Health. Um, so what we do is we take a um, passport photo of them, a copy of their certificate and send it into Montgomery County. They send back their health certificate and basically they can go and uh, every food serving establishment in Montgomery County, I believe it's in the state of Pennsylvania, is required to have at least one person that's certified in sanitation certification. And if you go to say a Wawa and you go order food, somewhere on the wall, there's, you're going to, if you look, you're gonna see a serve safe certificate along with their health certificate from, the, um, you know, they're, that they're able to serve food uh, from the Board of Health. And um, so it makes the students a lot more employable uh, because they're walking out with their certificates. Also, it's also a three credit class in, a, in all the post-secondary culinary schools. So in all the post-secondary culinary schools, they get credit. So they earn three, actually earn three college credits. That's part of um, the articulation agreements that, they, that we have with a number of schools that they will get three credits if they have their serve safe certificate. So they won't have to take that class in, in, uh, in college when they graduate. So that's great. It makes them employable plus gives them college credits all while you're in high school. So Cody, that's great. Good luck on that class. Um, Al, I wanted to ask you also when I was down in your class, you have all different beaters, all sizes, ovens, all that. What kind of equipment are the students working on? Uh, the students are basically working on industrial equipment. It's not like um, the home ec classes that they have at school. I guess I'm aging myself by calling it home ec. But, um, you know, they walk in, and a lot of people, when they come in, um, they're, they're really spellbound by the equipment that we do have. But the kids, the students work on everything from KitchenAid mixers all the way up to 60-quart mixer, which is about, you know, a little bit taller than me. Um, also, they have a rotating rack oven. Um, where we push the whole rack into the oven and the rack, rotate, the rack rotates. Um, we have deck ovens, which you're used to seeing, like they call them pizza ovens or whatever, but 
These are deck, regular deck ovens. Um, we have a steam kettle. We have donut fryers. Uh, so the students, we have a um, bread slicer. Uh, so we have all the equipment that the students could literally walk out, if the law allowed, could walk out of our lab and walk into a bakery and use all that equipment. Unfortunately, the child labor laws limit that, so they can't use anything mechanical, um, but they're, they're well prepared to use them. That's great. That, that sounds like there's so many opportunities there. Cody, with all that equipment, what are some of the favorite treats you like to make? I know when I first saw you, you had just decorated a cake that we had purchased for a coworker, and you know you were very excited mm -hmm. about it. So, what what are some of the things you like? Well, I made it yesterday, and it's pate chou. I I love making that. It's like a cream puff eclair kind of thing. Oh. You, you use a KitchenAid mixer, and then you put it in the deck oven. So nothing real complicated, but that is like my favorite thing to make. Is that one of the specialties you make at home too? Nope. Are you making I, any treats for your father? I make cookies and I made a cake, so. Are there any um, seasonal items you make? Um, in lab right now, we're preparing for apple pie, Halloween stuff. Like we do all kinds of seasonal. Um, apple pie, uh, hand. Christmas cookies. Yes, Christmas cookies. Easter time, we'll have the candied eggs, like peanut My butter, favorite. coconut. Um, so what do you do with the products you make, Al? We actually have a store and a restaurant that's open to the public on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, they're open from, in the morning, they're open from 8.45 to 10. And then in the afternoon, they're open from 12.15 to 2 or 12.30 to 2. Most people get there early, so we say 12.15 um, to around 2 o'clock. And uh, people can come in and have breakfast and lunch. Um, breakfast or lunch, but yeah, breakfast and lunch. And uh, then they can also purchase items in our store. So we have, uh, every week, we change items just like our menu changes in the restaurant. Our items in the bakery change. Um, so you need to check the website or give a call, see what we're having, or just stop in and see what we have every week. And it, you're welcome to come in every, anytime. And it's always delicious down there, so. I think you. know, I have my favorites. That's right. that my children want me to pick up. Now, people do say, though, why aren't you taking orders out from the public and why aren't you promoting this bakery more? Why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. You know, first and foremost, we are a school and the students have requirements that they need to learn. Um, we have what's called a test called National Occupational Testing Institute, NACTI, um, which is coming up for the seniors. They just took their pretest, and um, that's a lot of theory, theory-based and practical-based te tests. Um, so we have a lot of stuff that they need to learn in that direction. And given that they're only in the class a couple hours a day, it doesn't make for a whole lot of room. And because of our prices, we could probably be selling out the door, every, literally out the door every day. Um, so we, we need to limit that. And the other reason is we don't really want to compete with um, our local bakeries because they're the ones that are eventually going to hire the students. And if we're competing with them and because we do sell everything cheaper um, because we don't have to pay people to do the job, we still have to pay for the ingredients, but we don't have to pay for the people, uh, nor do we have to pay rent or utilities right. and things like that. So we can sell our items for relatively a lot cheaper than what they can sell it in the store. And so if they were coming to us, then the bakeries, you know, wouldn't want to hire our students because, first of all, they wouldn't have the business to hire our students. And second, um, they'd probably be mad at us for taking all their business. So we'd rather be on good terms with them and, um, you know, Lim I'd rather limit the students. Plus, again, the biggest reason is these are students and they're just learning and we don't want to overwhelm them too much. So Exactly. You just need a small outlet for right. the items they do make. Now, we know Cody's dad was a graduate of your program. What are graduates of your program doing? Have you kept in touch with some? Um, yeah, actually, I keep in touch with quite a few. Uh, some of them go on to school uh, and have... Some of them have gone on to school but then left the industry. Some of them are still in industry. There's uh, quite a few that actually work in uh, local grocery store managers and the bakeries as bakery managers and things like that. Um, and then others, like Cody's father, uh, decided to leave the industry altogether 
um, and do something completely different. It's a tough job, and, and kids find out really quickly uh, when they come in, whether they're in the cooking end or the baking end, that um, it's not all fun and games like they show on the bake, on the Food Network. And, um, you know, so it, there's a lot of things that are involved that you don't see on those shows. Or when you go into the bakery, you don't see everything that's involved in the actual production of the products that you get. So, um, you know, the students come in and they're all excited at first. And some kids keep that excitement, go all the way through, go on the post-secondary and go do really well. We have a number of students that are that are out there. Um, you know, I've had lucky enough to have a student that has um, been on the Food Network a few times, uh, two or three times, has won one of the food challenges, things like that. We have another culinary student that's doing really well down in um, the Baltimore area, has been written up in many uh, magazines down there. So, you know, we, we do have students out there that are continuing on in the business, and they kept that excitement going. But a lot of students come in and they realize it really is a lot of work. You're on your feet a lot all the time. Um, you know, most of the time you're working weekends, holidays. When everybody's out celebrating, you're working. So it's, you know, it's one of those things, like I said, they're, they see everything on the Food Network and they, you know, see the stores and the great stuff in the stores, but they don't realize what the hard work is they went into it. And so therefore, sometimes they kind of tend to lose that interest. But one of the things I try to tell my students all the time is, Regardless of what happens, um, it's a great fallback and it's a great thing. I always say, hey, it, you know, you can really impress a girl if you can bring her home and you can cook a good meal for her and, you know, rather than take her out to a restaurant and, you know, vice versa. So, you know, and if you're going on to college, even if you're going on for engineering or whatever, you know, at least you can cook for yourself and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, you know, once you get out there to go out to eat every day. So it's a great fallback job into work. If you can learn cake decorating, you can do that out of your home. Um, I guess I can say that. <laughs> but uh, you can do that out of your home and make some good side money. Um, there's a lot of people that do that. So it's a good fallback job, even if it's not one that you want to do for the rest of your life or continue on. And I think that's great that you point out the hard work involved and that you're graduates still keep in touch with you the ones especially that you know been on the food network still very successful and they're keeping you um, informed and basically telling you that they've worked so hard in your class and have the ability to still be successful so I mean obviously you put them right. on the right career path so that's great to hear now Cody we heard your dad recommend this program would you recommend the program or North Monco to others? Yes. And what would make you recommend it? It's a great school. I mean, one of the things I like, and this is about the classes here, that they're smaller. Like where you go to a normal high school, the classes are going to be more crowded. They're smaller here, and the teachers can get right to you and have more like personal time with each student. That's great. And I think we've heard earlier, too, that... Our friends in Diesel were saying they like the hands-on learning and being able to be told something by the teacher and then putting it into practice. So that's great. I want to thank you both for being here. Thank you. If you would like to know any more about the 22 programs offered at North Monco Technical Career Center, just give us a call at 215-368-1177 or visit our website, nmtcc.org. For North Monco Technical Career Center, I'm Suzette McHugh. Thank you for watching.